All right, uh, the GE collapse is continuing. Shares are down close to 18% just this month to former GE vice chairman, the former NBC Universal CEO and chairman, uh, Bob Wright. Bob, good, good to see you. Thank you, Neil. Thank you for having, having me. Uh, uh, much appreciated. Yeah, I love having you, my friend. Uh, uh, and I still hold you responsible for hiring me at CNBC, or at least <laughs> not putting the kibosh on it. So you, uh, much appreciated. You were, you were our star. Yeah, uh, I, if that were true. You I was were, your you, first anchor. And you were 13 years old. Uh, I wish time. that were true. But I, I always am grateful to you. So let me uh, get your take first on those heady days of GE. And of course, yeah. when everything was firing all cylinders, you and Jack Welch and a team that was considered like a Wharton dream team. Um, what happened? What's going on? Uh, well, it, it, it was, there was a lot more attention to the balance sheet uh, we had. And we also had a powerhouse in GE Capital. Yes. Which, was, which is, you know, a non-bank bank, which was very large and could do all kinds of financial transactions. Someone said it had the GDP of Latin America. Well, it's, it's <laughs> Dark, probably, right? probably true, it's certainly right. more than many countries. Uh, and that was a very big help. And it was looked after pretty carefully. Um, but everything can get away from you at some point or other. So uh, ML was trying to reduce the impact, the impact of uh, GE Capital. Uh, and but at the same time, um, that we, we, we had to deal with a number of outside issues, the collapse of the bubble in power, which was Enron, this kind right. of phony power shortage in America, which didn't actually exist. And we got hit with a lot of things. And, but everything was getting better until we had, to, until we had 15. Um, in, in 15, um, and I, I don't blame anybody, but I mean, uh, Trayan came, in, came into the, uh, to the uh, thing. They bought a big piece. They put a key member of their company on the board and so forth. And all of a sudden, there was, seems to be an absence of paying attention to the balance sheet and, and, and what the liabilities were that, that needed to be satisfied or how many other than how many, how many there were. Do you think in retrospect, Bob, that Jeff Immel Hire, nice and, and wonderful as a human being as he was, was the wrong choice and, and that started this path in the wrong direction? Now, of course, he well, came well, on board right before 9-11, yeah. and, and, and I understand that, but... Actually, the, the day of 9-11. The day, the day of 9-11, right. So wh what of that? Well, it's, it's well, in hindsight, you have to say that. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Jack, Jack Welch, Jack, feel Jack about Welch it? when you he, talk to him, he was, his, he was his pick yeah. among, the, among the other candidates. I went, helped as I could uh, on the board uh, with Jack. Uh, and it just, you know, somehow or other, we lost our, uh, and I say our because I never can quite get past it. Uh, they just lost our bearing and in, 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 in dealing with the balance sheet and those, those insurance liability should have been dealt with. They could have been dealt with for probably 12 to 13 billion dollars in terms of getting a reinsurance during but the you guys didn't thing. miss a line in that balance sheet. You couldn't get anything past Jack Welch or you, certainly at NBC Universal. And I'm just wondering now how you put the, 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 the egg back together. Is that even possible? I mean, a lot of people say, all right, no dividend, no nothing. I mean, sell off everything but, but the kitchen. I mean, is that really going to well, make a difference Well, you can't really you can't really do that because you've got uh, a certain amount of debt that is um, covered by GE uh, itself and you have bond issues. You just can't be selling things and expecting you're, you're going to reduce your your so it just income. gives you a temporary cash flow. It's, it's a one shot. It's a one shot deal. And then you don't get their earnings that are yeah. coming from that entity. So he's right. I, I hope understands that. He, you have to be, do that very carefully. Some have said he's going to be the last funeral director though. Well, <laughs> can you I, listen, picture a GE going, Bob? You know, you have to think. There's GE has another asset that's that's very hard to value, but can't be replaced. GE has a great reputation out in the entire world. They've done business everywhere for 80, 90 years, and some and these businesses that they have are taking advantage of that and so forth. And so you have to be you have to be very careful. That's a real asset, and you yeah. in, in there, and there most of their GE's employees are outside the United States. So that there's a huge goodwill effort, and can, and that's an asset that I think Larry appreciates, being from a smaller company that didn't have that right. reach. So he's got to get his business is performing 
well enough to, to cover his cost and reduce his but it leverage. Feeds on itself now. Well, now that's what you worry about. Well, he's 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 taking it day at a time, and I think that's the way to do it. He can always All sell right. something. You sell something, you don't get it back. Yeah. And you don't have the income from it. So that's you only get. Got to be shot. careful. If I could switch gears in your old, old neck of the woods, at NBC Universal, and of course you've been reading the, the battles this president has had with the press, yeah. wanting to take away uh, Jim Acosta's press credentials. This network, Fox, supports CNN and its legal effort to, to hold on to those credentials. H how do you feel about the administration's war with, in this case, CNN, but but the press in general? Well, I wish it would. I wish it wasn't there. I think it's distracting. Um, I do. I do resent the fact that uh, CNN spends about forty percent of its time attacking the president in one form or another. There's nothing he can do that's any good. Uh, and anything he does that's good, it doesn't get really a lot of coverage. So, it, it's it's there. It's a shame. It's a shame. It doesn't. But in your days running the news division as well as the network, you you would not have supported uh, the president revoking a press pass. Well, or would you? Well, that depends on what, who was doing it for what purpose. But the answer is, is no. You would you could suspend somebody. You would say, okay, if, uh, maybe you don't show up for the next one or something like that until you get your act together. What do you think of Jim Acosta when you've seen him in a press environment? Well, I, I saw. Um, I thought it was an unfortunate performance on his part too. He was standing up. He would. He wouldn't relinquish the microphone. He just. He, he was asked to do it three or four times, and that was inappropriate. Um, and he, you know, he could have been asked to sit down and not answer any more questions. There's other ways to deal with it, but it's it's just blowing up now. It's another issue. In your days, I mean, you had a far bigger things to worry about. Did you ever call reporters or anchors on the carpet for something you thought they got factually wrong or hyperventilated? Well, I would go through um, Andy Lack at that time, right. uh, who was a very good news director, and so I would go through other people. Uh, and generally, I wouldn't call the reporter directly, but I might talk to the reporter after, after it was over, but not, you know, not call directly.